In this video, I'm going to prove to you that you can start from basically nothing and become a wargamer for under 100 bucks. In last week's video, uh, where I, I listed my honest thoughts about the new Warhammer 40,000 Combat Patrol, Pachow, I mentioned at one point that if you, the viewers, wanted me to like you know make a video about how to start getting into wargaming cheaply, then you should let me know uh, in the comments down below. And a lot of you responded in the comments that you'd like to see that video. So let's see if you really meant it. Here's how to get into wargaming for less than a hundred dollars, less than the cost of uh, Vashtor the Archifane from Games Workshop. Now, we will start with some initial assumptions, things that are not included in the overall cost, things that you, you, you probably have this stuff around your house. I'm assuming that you have access to water and a cup, you know, for cleaning and rinsing your paintbrushes. I assume that you have paper towel also for wiping off your paintbrush and stuff like that. Probably some six-sided dice from maybe like an old board game, an old Yahtzee game or something like that in your closet or whatever. I'm assuming you have some sort of tape measure or ruler. Look in your junk drawer in your kitchen. You might find something like that. And you also hopefully have some sort of materials of any kind to use for terrain. Books, soda cans. It's the type of stuff that they generally mention in most wargaming rule sets. You know, they're like, well, if you don't have any proper terrain, then you can just use, you know, books and, and soda cans. And that's what they always say. And, and lastly, kind of, uh, you know, some sort of a flat play area, like a kitchen table or maybe a bed, or potentially the floor, or maybe a stretch of sidewalk outside. You know, I'm assuming you have all of these things available to you already. Now, let's get started. Step one, let's go to the dollar store. Uh, I went to my local Dollar Tree, uh, hashtag not sponsored, which honestly should be called the dollar and a quarter tree at this point, because everything is a buck twenty-five there now, because of inflation, I assume. But anyway, I found three things that we're going to need to become war gamers. Number one is super glue, also known as cyanoacrylate glue or CA glue. Um, you need that to glue generally your plastic things together, but unlike plastic cement, it'll also work on things that aren't plastic, like metal or resin, depending, you know, or whatever, or even cardboard and all kinds of things like that. You also need a craft knife, a craft knife. And I found a craft knife set with uh, all kinds of little blades and then the handle and all that kind of stuff and everything. You need that for scraping mold lines and trimming things and whatever. And then Makeup brushes. Uh, makeup brushes you kind of need a little bit later once you start painting. They're really good for dry brushing and stuff like that. I made a video about dry brushing with makeup brushes and how it is a, I think, a pro strat. But ciao. Um, after you've grabbed all of that stuff, which should be a buck and a quarter a piece, it's time to continue. I would tell you to get two of the makeup brushes, a big one and a small one. Now, leaving the dollar store, you're also going to want to get a set of clippers to snip the parts uh, off the sprues, the frames that, that hold on to the parts that make up the little plastic models and all kinds of stuff like that. That's called a sprue, that frame. And you want to snip the parts off with the clippers. You don't want to be like me back when I was a little kid and building model airplanes because I just would grab the part and just keep twisting until eventually it separated. And that's not good. It, does, it wrecks the parts in many situations. So let's not do that. The cheapest, like without being too crappy kind of snips that I could find, were these side cutters on Amazon for $7.76. Now, side cutters, you could probably use, you know, like wire snips that you might have around the house and things like that. There's all kinds of little snippers that you might have. You could even try a scissors maybe, but sometimes it's, that plastic can be sometimes a little thick where it attaches to the sprue. The, the, the side cutters are good because they have a very fine little kind of edge. And especially these days with a lot of miniatures, because they're using computers to show, to like, you know, basically Tetris all the parts onto the sprue. Sometimes the model part is very close to the edge of the sprue, so you need a tiny little snips to get in there and trim it. And side cutters are what you're looking for. And you can check those out on Amazon or maybe find them locally. But those are the cheapest ones that didn't look like they would break almost instantly. Now let's talk about paint, all right? Uh, don't buy paint from the dollar store you know, if you were at the Dollar Tree before, like me, don't buy paint from the dollar store or from a craft store or anything like that while you're there. Unless you plan on building, you know, terrain and then and painting it and stuff like that. Uh, craft paint's fine for terrain, but it is lousy for miniatures. So I would tell you to not buy those paints, even though they are very, very cheap. I would not buy them to try to paint your miniatures. 
what I would always suggest to people who ask, and I've been ask, you know, suggesting this for years now, um, the Army Painter makes a War Paints starter paint set, is I believe what it's technically called. And uh, whenever people ask me about, well, how do I get done painting? What should I do? Which, where should I start? I always send them over to that starter set. It includes a blue color, a yellow, a red, a green, a brown. There's a color called Barbarian Flesh, which is kind of Caucasian. Um, there's a white, a black. The white helps you to lighten things up. The black helps you think darken things down. And a silver metallic as well. And then also a wash too called Strong Tone Wash. And all of that comes in there also with a brush as well, like a nice little painting brush. This set retails for like 37 bucks, $36.99. But you might be able to get it cheaper at your local store. And it is an, a great starter kit. Now you're going to have to mix some colors if you're like, oh, I want orange. Well, you mix the, you know, the yellow and the red together and, and, and you want purple, it's blue and green. You, know, you, you can figure it out, look it up online, but that's what you can start with. And it's a great paint set for starting. The last of the hobby products that you have here, it, primer, okay? It's pretty important to prime your models after you get done building them. It makes this, the paint stick better. And it also helps with like underpainting, especially if you use a darker color in some situations, or maybe you want to use a lighter color, it depends, but it's good to have something over that plastic uh, before you start doing the painting, right? You can use brush on primer, uh, or you can use an airbrush, which is generally what I do, but the cheapest combination of like good quality and ease of use, and then also speed. Um, honestly, I always tell people Krylon camouflage paint. Uh, I did a review about it a billion years ago. Pachow. Uh, so, okay. Camouflage paint. That does not mean that when you spray it, it looks all camouflage. That's not how it works. What it is, is it is a set of six different paints and you only buy just one can at a time, whichever one you want. You don't have to buy them in a set. There's black, there's brown, like a real dark brown. There's two tans, a lighter one and a darker one, and two kind of like olive greens, a lighter one and a darker one. So you can pick whichever one of those you want. Maybe it's the black, maybe it's the brown, or maybe you're trying to paint a bunch of skeletons or something and you want to paint them real light. I would use one of the sand colors as a base, that kind of thing. It just works really well. And it doesn't have to be Krylon. Rust-Oleum makes a line of the exact same paints, basically. Pretty much the same colors, although they don't perfectly match. So if you run out of Krylon and then you pick up the same color in Rust-Oleum, they won't 100% match. But they're generally quite good, both of them. They have a very flat, matte finish. They stick to plastic very well. Paint sticks to that stuff very well. It's, it's really good. Um, the only difference between the Krylon and the Rust-Oleum is maybe where you can find it. And I think that the Krylon has a slightly better nozzle. That's maybe a personal preference. So all that said, I most recently found cans of Krylon camouflage colors at my local uh, Lowe's, like big, huge, you know, hardware store for $6.98 a can. So we got all that hobby stuff. But what about the actual rules, right? Like the game that we're actually going to play with these models that we're going to build and then paint with all this stuff that I've been talking about. My suggestion is Grimdark Future Firefight from One Page Rules. Now, One Page Rules makes a lot of different rule sets. Uh, they make sci-fi stuff and they make fantasy stuff. I'm leaning towards the sci-fi stuff here because I like it. And also, sci-fi stuff, at least in miniatures, seems to be a little bit more popular than fantasy stuff. But if you wanted to do fantasy, then I would tell you to use One Page Rules Age of Fantasy Skirmish. That's the basically the equivalent to Grimdark Future Firefight. And these are both skirmish style games where you don't have to use an entire giant army. You can use a smaller group of models. Um, you can download it for free, the, the rules, and I suggest that you do. Like kind of kick the tires a little bit and give it a try. But it's better, honestly, if you buy it for five bucks. Um, th there's a version you can buy for five bucks over at Wargame Vault. I'll put a, a link down in the description below. And when you buy it for five bucks, number one, it helps to support the company so they can keep making this stuff. But also, too, you get almost twice the amount of rules in that booklet. You get extra rules for like terrain and, you know, campaign stuff and all kinds of other stuff and a bunch of modular add-ons that you can decide to use and all that stuff. For five bucks for a PDF, it's a pretty good deal. And they have a really sweet army builder like app on their website that makes it really super easy and quick to build your own armies for Grimdark Future Firefight and all of their other games. So we've got all of that done. Now, which models are we going to use? Well, if you have a 3D printer, then you are frankly spoiled for choice. You, there are tens of thousands of STLs out there for you to use at all kinds of places. My mini factory, Cults 3D, 
uh, all the other ones. There's, but I'm going to assume here in this situation, let's say you don't have a 3D printer, which is fine. That's, that's nothing wrong. Um, I'm going to suggest Wargames Atlantic then for your models. Wargames Atlantic is a great company that makes a lot of different kinds of nice hard plastic models. Um, if you're playing Grimdark Future Firefight, then I might suggest a box of cannon fodder for $34.95. You will get uh, 30 models. Again, like I said, hard plastic on sprues, different parts and all the stuff that comes with them, and so many heads in that box, so you have lots of options. Um, but yeah, that's, that's 30 models for $34.95 in that box, which will be way more than enough to build a list for Grimdark Future Firefight because it's a skirmish game and not a big army game. You might, with that box, because it has 30, a bunch of their other boxes have 24 models and for the same price. This box has got 30. You might even be able to build two forces out of that one box, and then you and a friend could play against each other. So there we are, $96.38, not including, you know, like sales tax and whatnot, all that stuff. And you have everything that you need to, uh, you know, for 30 miniatures, you know, you have the box of all the miniatures. There's 30 miniatures in there. You can clip them off the sprues with your little side cutter. You can clean the mold lines with your hobby knife. You can glue them together with the super glue. You can prime them with your rattle can of uh, Krylon stuff. You can paint them with the Army Painter, you know, starter paint set. You can dry brush them with your um, dollar store uh, makeup brushes, all that kind of stuff. And then play them in a fun skirmish rule set from One Page Rules. All of that, all of it, from start, like you got nothing other than maybe some dice and some stuff to stack up to make into terrain, to finished models, a rule set, and everything ready, painted, and all to go. All that stuff, less than the price of one new f extra fancy Demon Princey guy uh, from uh, Games Workshop. Uh, so when people say that Wargaming is very expensive, they generally really mean that Warhammer is very expensive. So if you're thinking about getting into wargaming, but you've been concerned that it's too expensive, I really hope that this video can help. It's a great hobby. It's a lot of fun. It exercises your brain. It gives you a creative outlet, you know, something to focus on. It's stress relief, like all of those things. The, the important thing to understand is that it's not so expensive to get into the wargaming hobby, but it is pretty expensive to get into the Warhammer hobby. However, Warhammer isn't the whole wargaming hobby. There's so much more out there. I really hope this video helps you, and if you have any friends thinking about getting into wargaming, but they're like concerned or put off by the cost, something like that, please share this video with them. Hopefully it can help them too. Do me a favor and Share it with, honestly, whichever discussion group or Discord or Facebook group or whatever you might use that you think could use hearing it. And if you liked it, let YouTube know by clicking the like button down below. It really helps to spread this to more people. Subscribe if you want to, and thanks for watching.